Well, hey, fellas, uh, Thorzax here, and it's been a while since I put out a video, and I know that, and I need to kind of step up to my game. So, what I want to do is I want to do a brief, um, you know, talk about the Mech 650N. Um, I was kind of torn on whether or not I wanted the um, 600 Junior or the 650N, and I decided to go with the 650N. And I'm kind of glad I did because it 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 does it does do both things that I want it to do. For one thing, it will load singly. You can actually load a single round on the you know shell plate. It'll go all the way around and do everything that you need to do. Drop the powder, drop the shot and do the whole nine yards. Um, I've worked out with this press probably, I've made probably five, six hundred rounds with it already. So I kind of got a good idea what's going on. Now, I have bought an adjustable, you know, charge bar for it, and I started having a little bit of problem with that. So what I did is I swapped it back out for the regular charge bar that comes with the unit. Now this will throw one and a half, I mean, uh, one and one eighth of shot and then you have powder bushings so that you can uh, look it up in the manual of what kind of powder you're going to use and how many grains it's going to throw. Now right now I've got this loaded with red dot and I'm going to be throwing 17.5 grains of red dot with number eight shot. Now this is my homemade shot. This is the stuff that I've been making with my shot maker which will be a whole different series of videos because I'm still figuring out how to use that um, so anyway for those of you guys that have never uh, reloaded before one thing um, you know on a shot shell press one thing that you really need to do is you need to select good holes okay these right here are the Remington gun club holes you can get these once fired from BPI and they're relatively cheap one thing good about these holes is that they're made for the reloader. These these holes are made, uh, you know, extra tough. You can you can really get a lot of reloadings out of these, about six seven reloadings out of these before they wear out and they split and have all kinds of other problems. Um, so you want to select you know components that you'll be able to use. Now I have uh, some Chedite red you know, cheap $7.50 for a hundred uh, holes that I got from BPI. Uh, they're not in the same league as these. These right here are very good holes to use. Uh, the Chedite holes are just kind of like a once or twice fire and you throw them away. Um, these are, like I said, you can reuse these many times. So, what I have here is I have a Remington, no, a Winchester 209 primer, not a Remington, a Winchester 209 primer. And I use two different styles of wads. Now, this right here, for those guys that, you know, reload shotgun, that's pretty, this is the wind jammer. This is for one and an eighth ounce loads, and it has very thin pedals. Uh, these give a very controlled dispersion of the shot. Um, I also use the um, the uh, uh, Winchester uh, 118 uh, for the um, you know one and an eighth ounce loads as well. Um, but I'm not going to open up a bag just to show you guys. <laughs> you know what that looks like. You can pretty much see that. Um, you know. You can pretty much see what they the, the, those wads are. Those are these are common wads that you see for trap shooting, and that's basically what I'm going for. Is I want to be able to go out and shoot trap and uh, get performance. That's something that I want to kind of you know go over with you guys. If you go down to Walmart, you know for 19 and a half bucks, you're going to be able to go out and get uh, loaded you know, Winchester or Federal uh, target loads. Okay, seven and a half ounce, seven ounce, I mean, I mean, uh, number seven, seven and a half 
uh, one and an eighth ounce, one ounce uh, loads for fairly cheap. I mean, you know, I mean, 19 bucks for 100 rounds. The thing is, though, is that you're, you're not buying performance ammo. Okay, you're buying ammo that goes bang, and it, and, it, and and that ammo will make it out the end of the barrel, and for you know just general going out having fun blasting a few things milk jugs and stuff you know they'll work just fine uh, small game hunting that sort of thing works just fine uh, just general shooting but if you're gonna shoot trap you might as well look at it the way I did is spend the investment money and just get yourself some holes get yourself some decent wads get yourself some decent powder uh, select the type of shot that you want to use and then go with the performance because you're you, you can you can you can buy it yeah but those performance loads are very expensive you know STS uh, Remington's are very expensive but they're they're quality made trap loads and skeet loads now you're not going to get those for 19 bucks but I can reload those for 19 bucks less than that actually by using my own shot so you know there is ways that you can save money when you look at the overall picture at shotgun reloading so it is a worthwhile venture to do so anyway what I want to do is I want to demonstrate how this thing works okay I'm not going to use the automatic you know primer feeder the, autom the automatic primer feeder is uh, something that you got to get a feel for in order for it to work right and it all has to do with the way the you know, it feels in the handle as you pull the handle down, uh, and you know you're you're getting ready to load the shell. It, it'll drop a primer in this little area right here. There's a little area right there. The primer will go down inside there, and as you advance, okay, the turret on the bottom, it'll drop the primer down into the priming station. And as you go down uh, with your charge and priming, it will seat the primer and charge the case. So that'll be the first step. Now we're going to go about this just doing this singly, okay? So we'll get started. I'm going to go ahead and put the primer down inside the priming, you know, uh, mechanism. I'm going to set my shell in there. Now here's where the Achilles heel is to the automatic primer feed on the mech. Is that if you don't watch what you're doing, you'll catch the edge of the shell here, all right? And what will happen is that um, the edge of the shell uh, will get a gooner on it and once you it, it depends on the severity that you didn't catch it and that can lead to ruining your shell so let's go ahead and deprime okay so there's the old primer right there we're going to get rid of that By the way, like I said, these are made to be reloaded. Okay? These have the reloader in mind. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set up. Now, this will throw a powder charge in there of 17.5 with, the, uh, with the powder. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to prime. Okay, so we got 17.5 grains in there thrown from the uh, powder bar. The next step what will happen is it'll throw the shot. And so what we need to do is once we advance it again, okay, just like this, you go into the next advancement, all right, you take your wad, set it in your, you know, your wad feeder. Now the wad feeder has these little fingers underneath here, and those fingers guide the, uh, the, 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 the the gas seal down into the, in, into the, the, uh, the, the shell. And then what it does is it disperses powder over the top and into the shot cup. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down with our deal here, with our handle. Okay, okay now we fed okay, the, 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 the wad. The wad is going down inside the case. And what you're going to see here is that this is going to come over, the shot uh, bar is going to come over and disperse the shot. Okay, 
You guys hear that? Come back up. Now if you notice something, the mechanism, because there's not a shell in station one, or I mean station two here, it's not going to throw powder, okay, on the next step. And it won't throw anything else until there's a uh, shell in place. These are pressure sensitive and they help activate this whole thing. Also another thing too, you have an adjustment here where you can adjust the amount of pressure that you want to put on the um, wad itself up against the powder. That can have a lot to do with your ignition. Okay, And in the manual, Mech recommends that you start at 30 pounds, and that's what it's set for from the factory. And I haven't checked. Uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, uh, you know, adjusted that. I've just left that alone and went with it. Now, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to get me an overshot cart. Now, this is a step that you can take or not. Completely up to you. You know, if you want to get fancy or whatever. But you can get these little overshot cards, and what they do is they make a more uniform crimp on the top. Because what happens is, is that the fold does not dish down inside the case. Okay, You can run into that. So what these overshot cards do is they, they stop that from happening. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's a way of getting fancy, I guess, you know. But, like, as you can see, that's my shot. That's my homemade shot. That's homemade. Number eight load. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our overshot card down in there. Okay. Get it all started. Everything all happy, Neil. Everything all happy. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to start the star crimp. That's what this is. Okay, that, that's station number four number four. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down and start our star crank. There we go. Okay, as it comes back up, you'll see that the star crimp has already started and our overshot wad is in there and we're good to go. So, let's go on to the next step. And what this will do is this will fold in the crimp. Okay, and it will fold in the crimp and start the crimp uh, to a final stage. So we're going to come back down again, just like that, come back up, and as you can see, there you go. Now your fold crimp is all done, okay? The next step that we're going to do is that, if you look, there's a little bit of a, 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 a bulging effect right there. Okay, and we want to take that bulging effect out because we want this to be able to feed in autoloaders. And we don't want any trouble while we're out there shooting, you know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to taper that. And that's the next step in the mech unit. It'll actually taper it down and cause the shell to be more reliable if you're shooting it in an auto loader like a Model 1100 or even a pump shotgun for that matter. So now we go. Come back up. And as you can see, it put a small radius on there. Okay, and there you go. Perfect. That's ready to shoot. Number eight shot. I mean, there you go. And this is a performance load. You 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 are not going to be able to buy this for nineteen bucks down at Walmart. And it's and, and that stuff at Walmart is not going to perform like this either. So, shotgun is a worthwhile endeavor. Okay. Um, it depends on how much you're going to shoot, whether or not you're going to have, you know, um, you know, to, to go get a shot maker. I've been reclaiming uh, lead from the range, and uh, I have a large quantity of it. And um, so I can form those into ingots, and I can go ahead and make my own shot. Uh, it's really a cost savings thing for me, because a bag of shot anymore is 48 bucks plus tax at Sportsman Warehouse. I'm not going to pay that for 25 pounds worth of shot. I'll make the stuff. And the way I look at it, granted the shot maker was a big uh, expense, you know, but it was something that I had to decide right off the bat. Do I want to go out and buy shot at 48 bucks for 25 pounds? Or do I want to spend 
the money initially just to get a shot maker and make my own. And then, you know, after a certain amount of time, the shot maker will pay for itself. And I'll get the experience that I need in order to make proper shot and different sizes and that sort of thing, you know. And I'll be independent, really, from, um, you know, having to go out and buy it. Uh, so that's, that's basically what I was looking at, you know. Uh, like any type of venture of reloading, we do this because we, we, we enjoy it. However, the bottom line is performance. You know, we, we want the performance to improve over what we buy. And that's why we spend the money on it. Uh, that's the reason why we spend the money on dial calipers. Uh, we spend money on, you know, premium components. We uh, spend the extra time it, it takes to make our bullets. Um, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with being a cheapskate. I'm telling you something. You know, that's, that's, that, that, that's a misnomer. I mean, guys just say, oh, you know, you're just going to buy this stuff. Well, well, why? You can make it. Look at Uncle Jim. I'm really proud of Uncle Jim. If you haven't watched this show, man, you guys need to, you know, tune in on him. He's really, he's really doing a great job. He really is. Uh, you know, he came up with a fixture that you can actually reclaim your lead that you shoot. You know, and it's just a bunch of pine boards in a box. I mean, why throw away your lead? Why? It's completely reusable. You can just melt it down, and you can make shot out of it, or you can make bullets out of it, or whatever. You know? So, you know, there's independence in this. Another thing that I've been watching, too, is that I've been watching a lot of Russian um, videos um, and I'm going to tell you something. We live in the land of abundance. Okay. Now, we may be a capitalistic society. So, you know, supply and demand and all that other stuff, you know, running into shortages and all that stuff. It's all things that we have to be prepared for as reloaders. Over in Russia, those guys drill holes in tuna fish cans. And they get an old coffee pot and a stump burn. And that's how they make their shot. They, they literally pour the lead into a tuna fish can that has these holes in it and it dribbles through and goes into this pot and then they sort it out and they make what they need and then they go ahead and they reload it, you know, they reload it in their shells and go out and shoot it. You know, um, there are people in Russia that do have, you know, have the money and the means in order to buy stuff like this, but... You know, your common guy over there that's just out there, you know, hunting and, and, and he's subsidizing you know, his living by hunting and that sort of thing. I mean, those guys are, it's the mother of all invention. Those guys, you, you wouldn't believe it, some of the stuff that they have made in their garage. And they use it and it works just fine. I mean, it works just fine. Every bit of quality that you can get out of this machine is just a few basic hand tools that they have and that they've made, okay? So, I'm not saying I'd want to be them, but I, I'll tell you what, for educational videos, go ahead and tune in on some of those Russian things. Get the translator and, and tune in on that and look at some of the comments. Here's another thing too. If there's anything that's a like a, a blog about their gun laws or something, take a look at their comments, okay? Take a look at their comments. I mean, you'd be surprised with how, how frustrated those people are about gun laws over in Russia. And the way that they feel, they feel just like us. They want the freedom to not be slaves and not have to take uh, the opinion of some public official saying that this is all under the guise of safety or something like that. Or it needs to be regulated or whatever. You know, the... These people, have they live it every day, and they can tell you the real story once they get power to do that to you. You know, California and, and, and even up here in Washington State, we're, we're facing, um, you know, another gun legislation thing that's coming through. And they used trickery in order to get it on the ballot. They were saying that this, you know, this initiative was for, you know, helping the schools or going into the education fund or fixing the roads or whatever. Anything but gun law. Okay, they actually put little photos, you know, this is what it's going for on the little signature things, and it didn't have anything to do with that. Trickery, okay, they're lying to get those signatures. And I'm telling you, there's people out there that are desperate to do that. And they're paid. 
They're paid by the Bloombergs and these people that set up those little car, little tables up in front of Walmart and, and and wherever you go grocery shopping and that sort of thing. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Hey, sir, uh, you having a nice day? Would you mind, you know, signing for this incentive? It goes for, you know, helping the schools. I'm going to tell you what. Read. Read what the incentive says because they have got away with lying here to people. And it, it, it's, it, it's horrible. It's just, it, 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 it's awful that something has gotten down to that point. So, uh, where was I before I got off on my tangent? Uh, tune into the Reloaders Network. Um, there's, there's an awful lot of videos out there that are, that are available now. Uh, a lot of different authors, a lot of different guys are putting up videos. Um, you know. I just basically wanted to go ahead and bring you guys up to date on what's going on with Thorzax. I've had some health issues. I have to go to the uh, oral surgeon today. Um, not exactly the most funnest thing that I want to do, but I have a tooth that's bothering me. It bothered me so much last night, I ended up having to take off from work, and somebody had to cover my shift. So, you know, it's all the signs of getting older. So, yeah, it's, that's... The way it is. Welcome to the club, huh? So, there it is. The 650N. I think it was a well worth, uh, you know, uh, purchase of mine. Uh, it's a well balanced machine. If you like farm machinery, okay, if you like farm machinery, you're going to love this thing. Because that's basically what it is. This thing is just mechanized one thing after the other. And I'm going to tell you what, you got to keep an eye on your powder bar so you're not going to throw a shot without anything down here because man I'll tell you one thing shot when it hits a hard surface it splatters it goes everywhere and you'll have the shop vac out and you'll be vacuuming it up you'll still be running into little shot pellets on the floor so you gotta you gotta watch out for that too um, and watch the sales I mean watch on sale are not that expensive overshot cards uh, there are people that will, uh, you know, they, they, they make a little device they can put on top of their metallic press and make these, which is not a big deal. But, you know, you can buy these. They're cheap. Um, you know, I've got bags of these just sitting around. Uh, that's pretty much it, though. Anyway, this is Thor's Axe. I'll be coming out with another video on the uh, slug loads. Uh, I want to go ahead and demonstrate how to attach the fire hydrant uh, slug to the wad and you, you need to make yourself a little device in order to do that and we'll be covering that in the next video okay so this is Thorzax and I'm signing out